엄마 나 이거 다 버리려고 했는데 어? 못 버리겠어 왜? It's just so important um, This is like 네가 다시 볼 거야? 근데? 그게 중요한 거야 네가 다시 내가 언젠가 볼 거다 이건 하지만 네가 안볼 거면 갖고 있는다는 게 말이 안돼 If I'm gonna look at them again Then I'm allowed, I'm allowed to keep them But if I'm not gonna look at them Then I have to trash them Hi everyone, this is probably one of the most impromptu videos I've filmed but I've been off for a week I was like, I kind of want to film today so I thought I would I'm having a detox week and I just didn't want to curl or straighten my hair so I'm wearing this gorgeous DKNY cap I'm obsessed with it so I'm basically back at home so not in London, I'm back in my family home and my mum is like, you've got so many folders everywhere of all of your university stuff, I want you to get rid of it so I was like, it might be fun just to go through it whilst on camera. And also, I asked you guys on Instagram if you've got any questions, and I thought I'll answer them whilst I'm doing that. So I have got them here, and I'm just going to answer them now. And the first question is, if you could have a superpower, what would it be and why? I guess my superpower would be to know the extent to which I've hurt someone. I kind of feel like when we die, right, this is getting really deep now. When we die, I feel like you'll be sat in front of a screen and you will see just how much your words have purposely or not purposely hurt someone. And I guess if I was alive and I could see that, like if I said something and I could see on a scale of zero to 10, just how hurt that person was, I would do my best not to hurt them. You know what I mean? So like, I kind of want that superpower where I, c I can see a scale and I do my best to keep that number low. I think that would be a good superpower, right? That sounds like a really weird superpower, but that's like what came to my head. I am absolutely obsessed with this Rituals tea right now. Like it is so good. I think Angie, one of my best friends, um, got this for my mom. And basically I've just been coming back and drinking it. It's delicious. Okay, so I've actually organized my folders from year one to year four. Oh my gosh, guys, do you remember? I don't know if you went to King's or not, but BBT. This is Biochemical Basis of Therapeutics. As you can tell, we didn't have that many lectures, but like the brackets is how many lectures we had in that topic. So for cell structure and function, we had six lectures. And then I've obviously like ticked what I needed to get done. I used to love making these like front cover pages for uni, because then I'd know exactly what I need to learn. Did it help me learn? Not, not really. It was kind of like a waste of time. I, I need stuff to be organized to be ready to memorize it. So I think that's why I did that. I know people are gonna be like, you should sell these online, but I believe that knowledge should be free. I don't think time should be free, but I think that knowledge should be free. So for me to sell these would be against my values, but I guess I could share them. It's just, it's just knowing how to share them. Let me show you. Like I've typed them all out like this. My mom's telling me like, get rid of them, but how can I get rid of them? To be fair, like if I actually sat and studied this, I'd be in a much better position than I am now currently at my job. I just, I just don't think I can do this. I'm such a hoarder. I really love things. I love letters that people write to me. I love presents. I love birthday cards and I remember, and I could just end up keeping all of it. If you guys can think of a way I could share these without me having to like scan every single page and take forever, then let me know. Cause I'm sure someone at King's would benefit from this, but looking at this folder, I just don't think I can get rid of it. Second question is from Vera Fauzi and it's how are you? Thanks for asking. I love these kind of questions because you know, all I get is usually like questions from my friends or pharmacy related questions. So I really like questions that are just like, how are you? I'm doing well. I had a bit of a slump at the beginning of the week and I was processing a lot and thinking about stuff and what my values are. And you know, you go up and down and thinking about how you're supposed to live your life and all that, but I, I'm getting there and I feel like lots of things can come across in life where you are confused and you're not sure but you just need to sit down and take this time, take this annual leave and just reconsider everything and re-question. Like I really believe in 360s. You know at work you do 360s where you assess how you've been to different healthcare professionals, you assess how you feel, you assess like what your manager thinks of you and stuff. I really think that that's good in general for life as well. I think it's nice during this lockdown period just to sit down and ask yourself, am I happy? What can I do to be happier? Am I making other people happy? What kind of people do I want in my life? What kind of person do I want to be? What kind of friends do I want? Am I being a good friend? 
can I be a better friend? And just a general assessment of what's going on. Financially, emotionally, in terms of family, friends, everything. Okay, so this is from one of my friends and he said, 넌왜 살이 안 찌는 건 같냐? Which is, why the hell are you not gaining weight? Or like, why do you never seem to gain weight? Dude, I mean, you're in Australia, so I can't wait to go and see you and visit you. When you see me in Australia, you'll be like, this girl has gained weight. Like during lockdown and quarantine, although I've not technically been in lockdown because I've been working as an essential worker, I've gained weight. I guess like with me, it doesn't fluctuate that much. I just st kind of stick around the same numbers and I always have done. But I've definitely gained it, like for sure. And obviously gyms have been closed, so I haven't been going to the gym. They're reopening soon, so I can't wait for that. I hope Australia is all good and that you're going to visit us again in England soon because I haven't seen Chunyoung in the last time he came to visit London was like two years ago so yeah I miss you the next folder I have is oh look it's chemistry of drugs I've got the nice periodic table right at the front all these notes are like typed up and my mum's telling me to trash this you know how much effort went into this I just can't I just can't there was too many blood sweat and tears that went into this and Mariam literally helped me with everything chemistry and drugs wise like she she obviously carried me through the course so to get rid of that would be to get rid of everything she's helped me with so i can't do that i'm not even gonna look through okay we've got another question how serious are you about dating right now <laughs> i know who's asked me this as well i guess um i'm pretty serious i guess i'm pretty serious about dating right now it's an important time and an important age, I think like quite a pivotal age. And I feel like I'm ready to give it a really good shot. So thank you for asking that question. I'm guessing I'll see you soon. And I, I am pretty serious. Okay, the next folder is physical pharmaceutics. I hated this. I literally, to be fair, I probably could get rid of this because, oh, just looking at it makes me feel sick. I'm literally never gonna read these again. I've, I've literally made no progress right now, have I? I've not been able to trash anything. All this stuff, like if I knew properly now, I'd be so much better at my job. I really should just go to university again. I'm finally ready to study, guys. Like when I was at university, I, did, I wasn't ready, but now I see that all of this would contribute to being a better pharmacist. So I kind of do regret not taking studying seriously. It, like I took it seriously, but I just didn't want to be there. Whereas now I'm like, if I went to a lecture, I'd be like, this is actually relevant, I should be there. The next question is, can you do a daily makeup routine and give tips for dating? We've got quite a few dating questions this time around. So makeup routine, no, I cannot do a makeup routine. Guys, I've been breaking out so much due to having the mask on, being in a really stuffy environment in hospital. Like, you know all those girls that do all of those like contouring and all of that? I can't do it, I can't do it. And it's not really suited to my kind of face. So I don't think I could do a makeup routine and yeah, that's a no to the makeup routine. And tips for dating, I guess my tips for dating are make sure that you're healed from any kind of past trauma and make sure that you're genuine so you're not going out with the mindset of trying to like fuck people around and like mess with people. And don't try and mess with other people's hearts because karma is real and it will come back to you. So I think always go out there with a genuine heart and I think also be honest. So if you think you're not, it's not gonna work with somebody or you went on a date and you didn't really like it, then just to be like honest about it and not waste people's time, you know? Just say, look, I enjoyed the date, but I don't really see this going further. People can get hurt by that, but it's better than having that conversation 10 months, a year later. Another tip for dating is don't take everything personally. People are going through different stuff all of the time. So if someone says, I don't see us being together, it's not always about you. And it can be about what that person's going through. I think I've, I've got a video on this actually, because I remember one of my friends having a really hard time last year. And I made a video about it called rejection in the early phase of dating or something like that. I think you can only take rejection seriously when it comes in the form of a breakup, because that is when someone actually has data on you and valid data. So they can say, I've seen what you have to offer and I don't like it. And that's when it can hurt. And it makes sense that it hurts because that person has known you, they've seen you for a long time. Whereas after one or two dates, you know, that person doesn't really know you. They're going through their own thing and they might have just met someone who's more compatible. So don't take it personally. Okay, now I've got another question, which is, which year of M Farm was the biggest jump for you and why? First to second year was my biggest jump, guaranteed. Like. Because like I said, I've, I've said in quite a few of my videos, my first year was, I didn't know what to expect, so it kind of just flew past me. 
Whereas second year, like the content just doubled and I didn't know how to pa- like handle that. I didn't know how to study for it. I didn't know what to do. I crammed everything at the end and I had a massive breakdown. So definitely first to second year was the biggest jump for me. All right, now we are on to second year and I've got the nervous system here. It's just gonna end up with me keeping everything, isn't it? I don't know, I feel like I should really sit down one day and actually study these notes again. It was really awkward because uni notes are so in detail and you don't need to know that level of detail for work. But then to get rid of all of this is also really sad. And it's freaking 60K worth of debt. Okay, so there's some lecture slides here that I've crossed out because I've already made notes using them, which means that my notes will contain these lectures in the content, like within them. So I'm gonna get rid of these. I'm just getting really sick of myself, like I can't get rid of anything, this is terrible. Oh my gosh, seeing these notes has given me so much anxiety because this was the exam that I literally refused to walk into because I had so much anxiety. Like notes on migraine. I remember reading these notes in the library during second year and one of my really good friends, Tongi Nupa, saying like, how are you, hi, like he was in no, the year above. And I literally just remember crying. Like, that was one of my like, so like humiliating worst memories of being at Kings. Guys, have you seen this? this freaking paper which got me my first it was oh wow you know i can't even believe this kind of stuff was something i was capable of if someone asked me to write this now i'd be like i don't know i have no idea like seriously i can't believe i did that clearly i am not making progress on getting rid of stuff so i'm going to answer the final question and that is how do you deal with rejection in work relation in work or relationships or friendships Okay, so I get quite a lot of questions about rejection and that is mostly in terms of work. So, oh, I didn't get accepted by this hospital. I didn't get into hospital pharmacy, that kind of, you know, message on Instagram. Th those rejections should never be a barrier to your progress and your journey to hospital pharmacy. They're nothing, just keep going. And the right hospital at the right time will give the right place to you. You can't have that scarcity mindset where you're like oh my god oh my god there's not many jobs enough there's, there's not enough jobs blah blah okay you didn't get the job right fine How, what can i do to improve people are dying <laughs> i know it sounds really extreme but the people don't have food to eat you know people are in poverty and i kind of think me going to india every year which is where my dad works put that into perspective for me so when it comes to work rejection i i think i kind of take it quite well personally but what i want to say to you guys is there will always be job opportunities. All you need is that one person to look at you and say, hmm, this person, they may lack in this area or whatever, but they look like they're willing to try. I wanna give them a shot. All you need is that one person to believe in you. That's it, that's your way in. Just show how passionate you are and how much you're desperately wanting the job. When you connect with someone on that level, I feel like they see you. Like my interviewer came from community pharmacy so when I told her, obviously the step is going to be really hard, but I'm so desperate to make that step. She was like, yeah, I think she could kind of see herself in me. You can only ask and you can only keep trying. And one day that's going to be a yes. And no one's ever come out of an interview being like, I never learned anything from that. You always learn something from an interview, whether it's about yourself, whether it's about other people, whether it's about how you could have answered a question better. You always learn. So learn something from it and just shake it off, literally shake it off. You can't let those things be a barrier or else you're just gonna crumble. When it comes to rejection in terms of personal life, it's it's really hard because you feel like when someone rejects you, it's a rejection of you as a whole person and what you can offer to the table, right? But again, my mindset is the same. Only you know what value you can bring, right? And if you're a product, or I always tell my friends, like if you're like a mobile phone, and I'm like, hi guys, buy this mobile phone. Um, it's really not really upgrading very often and it's kind of like, kind of good, but I put it, I'm gonna put it on sale. Like, will you buy it? Oh, uh, please take this. It's not, it's not selling yourself well. Constantly work on upgrading yourself and the right owner will be the right match for you, if that makes sense. And I know it's hard, I know it's hard because I always have those down days where I'm like, oh, like this happened or going through a breakup or when you feel rejected by someone, it's, it's, really really tough and you feel like your whole being is being rejected but there's only an uphill like climb from there you can only keep going up by improving yourself so i guess what i'm trying to say is if you are going through rejection then there has to be two parts to it one part is the processing and the depressive part but the next part has to be the reform 
build up and stand back up again part. And as long as those two parts come together, then you'll be fine. You can't just sit in this depressive part. And I don't know, I'm not telling you that you have to be in this part for a certain amount of time. You don't know, everyone has a personal journey. It could take you a week, a day, a year to get through that. But as long as you get through that bit and then come out of the other side willing to do this part, which is the reform, rebuild, reassess part, then you'll be fine. Even if I'm in the episode, I always think to myself, I know I'm in this episode right now and I know I'm in a slump and I know I'm paralyzed, but the next part's gonna be my reform part. I know this was such a rambly video and I basically wasn't able to get rid of anything because I have so many attachments to all of my notes and I'm a super hoarder, but it's just a casual video. I hope everyone is doing well and I'll see you in the next video.